All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Athlete and Artist Show. I am the artist, Kyle Forch, alongside the athlete, former NHLer Zach Boychuk. Our guest on the show today, also a former professional athlete. He won the NCAA Big Ten Championship. He was drafted by the Anaheim Ducks. He's a former reality star and now a luxury realtor, Mr. Nick Cardillas. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good, fellas. How are you guys doing? Not too bad. Just enjoying this uh, cold weather we got out here in Calgary. I oh, love it. Yeah, we got a rainy day here, but we were seven degrees and sunny yesterday in Nashville. So this weather, you just don't know what you're going to get, but getting that's, ready for the spring. That's tanning weather out here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's I mean, I probably, what, 50 shorts. degrees is probably tanning weather for you guys. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've seen it snow, <laughs> snow in July. So any anytime there's a little bit of sunshine, people are tarps off, shorts on the patio. Especially boy chuck, eh? Boy chuck's <laughs> always, boy chuck's always <laughs> no, on the patio I'm... somewhere. I've gotten soft living down in Carolina for all those years. I, I need warm weather again. So, so Nick, uh, let's start with your hockey career. You, yeah. you go back into, it looks like you started out in the national development program, you know, coming up in the minors. How did that kind of come about? Were you scouted and invited to the program or did you, did you go and try out or how did you kind of get into, into that program? Yeah, hockey as a whole, there's no really back backstory for my family of hockey in there. I mean, my mom's from Montreal, but I mean, she wasn't a big hockey fan or anything. But we lived in California. I started hockey when I was six and a half, which, you know, is kind of late for hockey, of course, like you guys know. And uh, I sucked, played roller hockey, got into ice hockey. And eventually, yeah, I got recruited. Uh, it was my midget year, 16 AAA, uh, got recruited by the National Team Development Program uh to go try out for them and ended up committing early and was in ann arbor for two years at the national team development program and i mean just really took off from there because i mean i wasn't anything special at that time and obviously still not today but i uh worked my butt off had a good work ethic and then eventually you know got drafted so that's kind of my my quick story on it what's uh what kind of guys did you play with out there coming up in that program were there any big names yeah we had some big names. I mean, a lot of them still play. We got, you know, Ryan Hartman. He's with Minnesota. You've got Seth Jones, Chicago, Jacob Truba, New York Rangers, uh, Brady Shea. Uh, I forget where he's at. I know it might, might be Carolina. Uh, Grizzly, he's in Boston. Um, I mean, yeah, we had some pretty big names. Our, our D core was pretty, pretty awesome. I think all of them ended up playing full time NHL. So what was the California hockey like? Like you said you played some roller hockey and obviously that program must be way different now than it was when you were coming up, but um there's some yeah. pretty sick players coming from there nowadays. Yeah, I mean everyone would uh, when I grew up there was maybe two ice rinks between an hour apart from like where I lived. I mean they're getting ice was really tough, so I still continued to play roller hockey for quite a bit while I was playing ice hockey until my coach said, stop, you're playing roller hockey on ice right now. It's not looking too good. So I got rid of that. But, I mean, it's definitely changed. They've got high school hockey out there, which I didn't have when I was playing. So it's good to see, you know, a high school hockey program all throughout SoCal. And they're playing up in NorCal as well, too. So it's definitely picked up. You've got, like, teams like the Ducks and the Kings who are kind of helping back back those you know programs and and grow the sport and yeah i mean there's some big players that are coming out of california now they've got usa nationals going on out there right now too and do Louisville, they I think yeah it's uh oh nice U U 18 U 16 i think there might be some other divisions in there but yeah i know a couple kids playing in it heck yeah yeah i didn't i didn't know that but i'm not surprised san jose was always a place we'd go to as well for you know because they always had a few ice rinks up there and a cool facility with the Sharks. But, I mean, we usually would have to travel out of state, whether it be Chicago, New York, Detroit, you know, different places like that in order to play these tournaments. So it was like I was a professional in a way, traveling every month when I was a kid in high school, having to miss school. It was really weird. I couldn't just play in California. But now it's completely different. So what was the furthest place that you guys would have had to travel for a tournament then like all the way to the East coast, obviously. But yeah. Like, what was like the, did you have to bus too? Or did you, did you guys have the luxury of taking flights or what was yeah. kind of like the, the, pay, the I mean, pain in the ass in terms of travel? Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, it was kind of like we take our Southwest flights or whatever. I mean, it was just whatever our parents would book us. Um, it was, you know, yeah, we barely, I mean, we, we didn't even, I mean, we would fly to San Jose 
some people would just drive. It's really up to you. I mean, it wasn't professional, obviously, so it's whatever the parents wanted to do. But we either carpool up to San Jose or for flying out of state, we've got whatever flight, to, you know, American Airlines, Delta, that kind of thing. So nothing too special. And then coming out of the, the National Development Program, you, you go into you commit to University of Wisconsin, which is an awesome program, you know, most years. They struggled a little bit this year, but uh, what what was the process in terms of, you know, how you committed there? Did you were you, did you go visit a lot of different programs or were they kind of your your top decision from the start or how did that process yeah. go for you? So that process was interesting. I committed early. Uh, I don't know if that's still a big thing these days, but when I was, you know, growing up too, everyone started committing at like 15 and all that stuff. So yeah. I was on that on that train too, where I was going to a couple different schools. We played in Denver for a youth hockey tournament. So I went to do an unofficial visit there. Uh, they were interested, had sent me letters, uh, Boston. I looked at Boston university. Uh, but really, I mean, out of, I had dwindled it down to like three or four schools pretty quickly. It was Denver, Michigan and, uh, university of Wisconsin. So I committed at like 15 and a half, uh, at Wisconsin. I just knew it. I fell in love with it. I went there for an outdoor game at Camp Randall. It was University of Michigan versus um, versus Wisconsin. Went to that with my mom. Uh, the guy at the time, Kevin Patrick, was one of the assistant coaches, showed me around. Uh, I believe I got into a bar <laughs> with some of the guys. I didn't drink, obviously, but um, sure you did. it was – it was uh, what was his name? I forget his name. Oh, my God, I'm so bad. Uh, Don Ramage, he showed me around. Um, Rammer. So, oh, yeah, Rammer. So he showed oh me around. God. I don't think I really ran into Zangs at that time, thank God, because uh, he would have been a terrible <laughs> influence on me. But, uh, but yeah, so I fell in love with it, the two lakes right there. I didn't fall in love, fall in love with the weather, of course, because it was freezing, but there's just so much to do there. Great, great sports, basketball, football, and just a fun vibe. Did you ever consider major junior in Canada? Was there any like scouts uh, watching at all? I'm sure there was when you were at the junior program, but yeah, I got drafted by Kelowna like late round pick because I was pretty vocal, I guess, in a time where there wasn't really much social media. But I was very keen on I'm going to go to college, get my degree, do all that stuff, even though I don't have my degree today. Um, <laughs> but I was looking at Kelowna. Obviously, they drafted me uh, in the WHL. But I just really didn't ever have a thought to do it. I was really keen on going to school and getting my education at least started. And so, um, so yeah, that's kind of why I went that route. Did, did you play with Colin Long at all growing up, or is he, he's a couple years older than you? Yeah, he's a little older than me, so I never played with him. Um, I mean, the 90 – because what birth year is he? Do you remember? 89. He's the same yeah. as me. Yeah, so I would like 92s were probably, you know, Emerson Edom – uh you know there's the names like that matt nieto i i knew those guys but that's probably about the oldest that i kind of went in terms of being friends with so you, then you're uh, at yeah. wisco hanging out with mark zangerly and yeah obviously winning some, was, uh, some big games i think that'd be like a pretty awesome place to play no it was great and they they told me from the beginning hey you're gonna go play first line with mark zangley and tyler barnes and like we're gonna make this work you guys are gonna be the best line in college hockey and we had some success so i uh i really enjoyed it and those were just good guys the whole team was a fun group to be around and um we definitely had some fun whether it be just the traveling part of it and playing college hockey but also just the school and the the atmosphere playing at the cole center you ended up playing with a, a buddy I went to high school with too, Morgan Zelenik out there at, at Wisco. Yeah, he was my roommate. Yeah, we talked about that. He was my yeah. roommate um, and my first Small year world. freshman. Cause we we weren't allowed to be in uh, in dorms because the guys in the past years messed it up to where we got I'm kicked shocked. out. So we had to share a two-bedroom with four guys uh, apartment. And Morgan Zelenik, Zoli, he was my actually like my bunk mate. So that was fun. Kids a, kid's a hoot. I love that guy. Yeah, how were you guys there for you you were both there for what, two years, two or three years? So I was there for two years. So I left after my sophomore year and I think I I think he stayed another I know he stayed another year. I don't know if he stayed all four years. You might know better than I do. No, he, um, I don't think he stayed four because he had he ended up having a kid and then yeah. he was I think he wanted to spend more time or be closer be closer to the kid, but 
Um, yeah. he, ended up, he ended up coming out here and playing like a year at Mount Royal after he took two years off. But yeah, that's crazy. He wanted, you guys were playing there for. He was like a he was like a mini Mark Zangli. I don't know if you know him, um, but Zoli is like a little a Mark Zangli with his hands and all that stuff. He's a, and he's just a hoot. He's a fun kid, good character. Yeah, really nice kid. He was yeah. uh, he was one of the probably probably one of the best kids in our school. You know, coming up, he was like the, the one of the guys that everyone was like, he's gonna probably go pro at some point because he was playing for the Silver Bats yeah. and ended up committing. You know, all the other guys were yeah. going like major junior if they could. He was the him and like Shane Hanna were the two guys that played salmon arm and then ended up going NCAA. Yeah, that's awesome. He's a good kid, good kid for sure. So, and you ended up going from from Wisco to you spent two years there. Then did you did you just get a, a pro contract offer and you're like I'm out of, I'm ready to get out of college and start making some money or how did that? What was your thought process on yes. pro before you were done? So I was drafted in 2012 by Anaheim. So it was my hometown yeah. team, you know, pretty good draft pick, you know, a lot of hype, everything was going well, but then I started getting the injury bug. And so after two years, I was like, okay, I've had two good years. I'm injury prone. Like I got to go do this whole pro thing. And they, you know, asked me if I'd come out and I said, yeah, for sure. So I signed with Anaheim, a three-year entry level contract, uh, obviously two way. And, um, started my career in norfolk it's norfolk virginia that's how they say it um and started over there for the admirals and then played the full season there the following year um we moved the team to san diego for the goals and so i was up and down that year i believe um i mean i played a couple nhl games a couple playoff games but i was mostly down in my career but i was with the anaheim ducks organization for about four years before uh getting traded to winnipeg but yeah, I left college and went over to Norfolk, Virginia. And how was that uh, like for you living out there, like living in, in a playing in the, in the minor leagues your first couple of years, going from Wisco? Like, was the was the yeah. experience nice? And like, is is how do you say you pronounce it, Norfolk? It's Norfolk, yeah. And I still go back to Norfolk <laughs> because I feel weird saying Norfolk, but hey, it's Norfolk. Um, is that but a yeah, pretty, it's a pretty small town, it, or what's what's the it, atmosphere like there for to have a team? Have you guys heard of Virginia Beach before or no? Have you heard of that place? Yeah, I mean, Virginia Beach is a popular area, I guess, for, like, tourism, too. And um, and so we're 30 minutes from Virginia Beach, so a lot of the guys would live right on the beach. So that was pretty cool. I lived right downtown in a little apartment because it was my first year. The town itself is great, uh, super quiet. It's got some, you know, good commercial out there, commercial spaces and food restaurants. But I lived right across the rink. I'd go to the rink and then go home. Now, when it comes to the minor league lifestyle, um, shit, I mean, <laughs> it, it was different because that when you're playing on the East Coast, you're taking sleeper buses and you're driving 16 hours, 18 hours, 12 hours, roadies, and you're the rookie, you're not getting a bunk. You're sitting right in the middle of the hallway or you're laying down on the, on the hallway floor of the bus. So it was rough, you know, but I paid my dues with it and I, I didn't open my mouth about it. And um and yeah, it was just long travel, for sure. Chucky probably knows, but I will that, say more about that than, than I. Oh do yeah. in terms of you know, grinding yeah. Out when I was in Charlotte, um, our closest team was Norfolk, so like it was, but it was five or six hour bus. Yeah, that was the only place we bus. We flew everywhere else, but I thought I, I loved that. going to Norfolk, and uh, I'm sure you probably loved coming to Charlotte too, but. It's probably a little yeah. better uh, for Anaheim's organization to be in San Diego now because then you're way closer. Yeah. You don't have to take those long flights if you get called up. But it's an experience in the Always Hungry League, right? In the NHL. Oh, NHL is yeah. a lot yeah. nicer. It is. I mean, it makes you want to work for it for sure. I mean, our closest, yeah, our closest trip was to Charlotte, and I don't think we even played you guys that much, but because um, we were going up to Manchester and stuff all the time. But yeah, I mean, we loved going to Charlotte. Charlotte's a good town. I remember you guys would fly everywhere. That's why everyone's like, "Hey, I want to go play in Charlotte," because you guys would actually get to fly. <laughs> but when we went to San Diego, I mean, we had our group of guys. Like we played Ontario Rain. That was really like our only bus trip. And who else? At the time, I think it was really only Ontario because even going to San Jose, we would fly. So we'd all get on Southwest and fly as a team, which was kind of cool. And we would fly everywhere, which was really cool for you know minor league team. And so when did when did you do you remember getting your first ever call up 
And what what was that feeling like for you after you know grinding it out, you know going through NCAA and going into you know the the American Hockey League, getting that first call up? How how did that feel for you? And and what was the you know what was the situation? Yeah, um, I remember it pretty vividly. I just it, I was having a pretty good tear. I mean, for like two weeks, I was getting points left and right, and I was had a couple cool goals. And I was like, oh man, I wasn't even thinking it would happen, but I was just playing well and feeling well. And then all of a sudden, um, one day at practice, uh, Bob Ferguson, the GM of the um, the goals, and just called me in the office, and he just looked at me and says, "You ready?" And I go for what he goes you're going up i go shit really when he goes now go grab your stuff and put in your car and drive up to anaheim so i said okay well and so i did and uh what was cool is that my first stop was actually i went to my house i went to my parents house that live in they live in irvine which is 10 minutes from the rink from the pond honda Honda center whatever and so um we weren't playing till the next day and i'd already practiced so they just said come in the next day for morning skate and we got a game against boston not expecting to play I didn't know that there was just an injury up top. And uh, I, wo- I went up, I got to the rink the next morning and um, I had, you know, that the jerseys out and they had me on a line with uh, Raquel and Perry. And I was like, what the hell? Like, I'm about to play that's with gotta, Raquel. And that's got to be in the top like, six, right? Yeah, that's kind of, I was like, basically, yeah, it was a top six night for me. And obviously after that, even though I had a good game, uh, we had, we scored two goals as a, as a line. I didn't assist on any of them, but I was still <laughs> out there and plus two against Boston. But I mean, it was incredible. It was, I got, I think I had 30 people in the stands from like my high school and, fr- and friends and family that were there. Nice. Um, it was just a really cool experience. Did the whole lap by myself and, uh, super surreal. I didn't last very long up there, but um you know i was somebody that they'd call up for injuries and you know just sit sit there if uh if they needed to be called up for something but a fourth line guy if anything and just a lot of injuries but it was an incredible experience man it was awesome did you get any advice from any any of the vets there like perry or or getsy did they did they have anything to say to you when he came up for that first game well so i i mean i skated with those guys in the summers too because i would go to wisconsin train in the summer for the most part with zangerly and all those guys but i would actually spend probably about a month and a half in california right before develop or whether it be development camp or training camp and i would skate with uh perry Gatsloff, um you know other guys that were staying there in the summer cogliano he was always there and so i knew those guys pretty well so when I got called up, it was like we actually had some familiar familiarity with each other. And, you know, Getsy, I remember he was just, you know, as, as Getsy would, just a good leader. He's just like, hey, Courage, you're going to be good, brother. Just go out there, do your thing. Don't change anything. Have fun out there. Enjoy the moment. And uh, don't overthink it, which I really didn't overthink it that game. I'd say the other games, I might have overthought it too much. But he was uh, just really calm, calm, cool, collected guy, as most people know him. And he just kind of reassured me that everything was going to be good do your thing all right guys i gotta talk to you about index index is a canadian crypto trading platform where you can buy sell and stake crypto instantly at index.io it's safe no nonsense just crypto and you can get 15 dollars on your first 100 dollars deposit when you use the promo code athlete artist when you sign up at ndax.io if you're into staking, I don't think it's ever been easier. All you got to do is choose an eligible coin like Ethereum, my personal favorite. Then choose the amount that you want to stake, the length that you want to stake it for, and then sit back and watch your rewards. You can claim your earnings either daily or weekly. So again, get $15 in your first $100 deposit using the promo code ATHLETEARTIST at ndax.io. So then how did the trade uh, go down with, uh, with Winnipeg? Oh, yeah, come back, come about. Yeah, so that trade was uh kind of I I asked for it in a very respectful way. We were just kind of talking about what the future plan was going to be like and um if I fit in the in the plan and we talked about it and it didn't seem like I was going to be that call up guy anymore and so unless I made the team straight out, uh they were going to be pushing younger guys. Uh, so I just said, maybe it's best for us to go a different way. My agent did. And so we just started exploring trade options and, you know, Winnipeg was interested. They had a guy named Chase DeLeo, who's also a California guy. So two California guys, uh, traded spots. I know Chase very well. We grew up together. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, I, I got to enjoy the California sun for a bit. And so he was excited to come back home and get to do the same thing. And I was going to a really cold, cold place, but um, I enjoyed one effect too. The people were so, so cool. I mean, the fans love, love hockey. Obviously it's a big sport there. Um, so it was a different experience for me. Uh, but unfortunately again, injury prone, got another concussion and had to, had to call it quits after that one. So that's what kind Dang. of ended your, ended your career was, was concussion and injury problems then. Cause you were, you looked yeah. like, based on your numbers, you were playing really, really well at the, at the, at the American league level. So there's no doubt that you would have gotten, you know, bigger opportunities kind of moving forward, especially still being, being so young at the time too. Absolutely. Yeah. It was all injuries. I mean, I was still performing well. Whenever I was in the lineup, I was always, at least in the minor leagues, I was a first or second line guy, you know, penalty kill, power play, doing everything. And like one of my favorite coaches of all times is Dallas Eakins, who was in San Diego with us. And I think he might still be in Anaheim right now. Um, he he gave me every opportunity and I made the most of it. It's just, unfortunately, this, I would play kind of dumb, be diving for pucks head first, right? like just stupid <laughs> shit. That I regret so bad, so bad. But um, you know, just concussion after concussion, they became easier and easier to get. And so I got to a point where it just wasn't worth uh, beating my head through a wall and maybe being in a wheelchair, especially because I, I some life things had happened in my relationship with people, and I was like, oh, I just don't want to put all my eggs in, in in one basket with hockey. There's more to life, so that's why I made that decision. Did you ever consider going to Europe or trying trying that out at all, or that just didn't really uh, come about at that point? No, uh, I really didn't. I, I've always thought, hey, when I'm you know ready to, when I feel like I'm not going to make it to the NHL full time, I would give Europe a, a shot because I want to go travel, live there, experience that, and uh, and there's good money out there too, obviously. Uh, but what it came down to was injuries. It wasn't feeling like I didn't have a chance. It just felt like I was just always going to get hurt and it might get worse. So I was just injury related. I said, I'm done. I'm done with hockey as a whole. That's why I don't even play pickup hockey anymore because knowing my, knowing myself, I'd probably hurt myself in men's league, to be honest. So how do you, how do you end up going from playing hockey to this reality show that you found yourself in? on it before was that kind of at the same time that you were transitioning to real estate or how did that kind of that whole entire situation kind of develop yeah so that's that was part of my decision making i had found somebody at the time that you know i was getting engaged to and i was in a, a serious relationship so that's where i was you know had some input from my family everyone around there that hey let's you got to look at the whole picture and so uh i just made the decision to stop and you know her pat her her career was in the reality tv space so when i came to decide to move here where she was located um i knew i was going to get into real estate i had already had my license actually prior to retiring just to be safe and she was in reality tv so i just basically did some of that with them um not good at it i don't think uh people <laughs> say you should go on reality tv and do the bachelorette and all these things i'm just like it's just not my my thing i don't think i'm good at tv but i made some appearances um and so it's kind of a weird world but i made some appearances what how, what, how did that feel for you because it's it's a different type of being in front of the camera than than it is for hockey like for yeah regardless of what level you're at you know your answer you're you're doing interviews you know with with places like tsn or espn depending on what level you're at and then with reality tv i, I just shot a, a, a tv show it's a completely different you know feeling um in terms oh yeah of, what you're supposed to be doing like you're not just answering people's questions they're like watching you like throughout the day type of thing it's so how, mm -hmm. how did that how did you adjust to that like what what was the original feeling like was it uncomfortable or did you adjust to it decently well or yeah it almost felt like at times i got caught as if i was doing like a post-game interview like a press conference or something you know get just, pucks deep uh yeah, yeah. i'm gonna get, <laughs> get some pucks deep here and uh you know so that, i kind of got caught a couple times like hey i'm not doing this it's completely different so you kind of just get used to it but yeah i got caught a couple times and they kind of feed you some stuff sometimes to be like hey you know you say it more like this because it sounds weird and i'm like yeah you're right it does sound weird so it was just different. I had to adapt to it. Um, like I said, I was fortunate to be on. I thought it was a cool experience. It's just not really my cup of tea. Um, but who knows? So that was, was reality TV. So was it much. shot like mostly in Nashville or like California? Or are you like kind of like all over? Like was she with you in Winnipeg too? Or 
Yeah, so she would travel here and there. Uh, they never shot anything in Winnipeg. Um, but, yeah, it was mostly filmed in Nashville. And then they had a spinoff show uh, that's called uh, Growing Up Chrisley. It was her and her brother. And so um, they did the spinoff show in California. So I'd fly there from real estate to, to filming. I'd kind of fly back there every week, which was kind of interesting. Um, so just a mix. And so in terms of in terms of the show, and re- so you said you were already getting into real estate by the time that you started doing the show and left hockey. So what what made your made real estate become like the interest and in something that you really wanted to focus on? Yeah, I've always had um, I've always had interest in real estate. I thought it was really interesting in terms of, you know, getting to deal with people on a day to day basis and like talk numbers, investments. Um, it's the biggest purchase that people make, uh, in their lifetime oftentimes. So it just, it felt like, and also I, I don't want to work for anybody. I'm, uh, you know, hockey is an, as a hybrid to me, but I don't want to have a boss. I want to create my own businesses. I want to have my own schedule. And so that was very attractive in the real estate, real estate space for me. So I knew that my hockey career, there was a chance that if I got hurt again, I'd be done. And so I proactively, uh, the summer before I went to Winnipeg, I got my license. Um, I went skydiving in between uh, my contracts. Actually, that's kind of funny. But no, I got my I got my real estate license, um, and then that way I knew maybe I jinxed myself, but I knew that once hockey ended, I had that to fall back on right away. And so I just picked it up like that. Did playing um, like did, did the the exposure that you got from playing professional hockey and, and this TV show help? building your real estate business at all like did you see an extra bump in terms of marketing or in terms of like the the reach that you had absolutely i think you guys all know this that social media is such a powerful tool whether it be negative or positive there's both um and so having a following from my hockey career my playing days to reality tv and getting a following there it was so much easier to just go ahead and tell people, Hey, I'm in real estate. Cause like, that's the first thing you do when you get into real estate, you have to tell people what you do on a day to day basis. And you sound like a salesman. Hey, I'm in real estate. Can you anything? Blah, blah, blah. But I had the opportunity to be like, Hey, post I'm in real estate and just staying on top of mind to people became so much easier because I had that following. So I, I give credit where credit's due. And my following was definitely a huge, um, kind of launching pad for my real estate career. That's awesome. That's, I think it's, it's social media is, I mean, we, we've talked about this all the time, like Zach and I on the show and, and outside of the show, it, the, the older generation still doesn't understand that social media is really like the way to expand your business now, especially when, you know, you have platforms like TikTok and Instagram and there's really, there's very little that you need, like an actual full degree for anymore in terms of like business, because people learn how to create their own brands and their own businesses and monetize themselves throughout these entire platforms. So yeah, it's, it's oh, yeah. Really beneficial that you were able to figure out a way to, you know, use it to your advantage. Cause you mentioned there, you know, there's a good side and a bad side to social media. Um, so really using it for the good and being able to take advantage of it and create opportunities from it, I think is, is super, is super cool that you were able to do that. Oh yeah. And like, trust me, I, I say all the time to my, to my friends, I'm like, I hate social media. Sometimes I hate it. I hate it because you know, there, I think there's such an unhealthy part of it with, you know, comparing yourself to other people, you know, mental health stuff. Um, you know, it's just, you're seeing you're everyone's so accessible nowadays because of social media that it's like, it, it can hurt you too. But the powerful part of it, and I kind of related to what just happened here in Nashville, the school shooting that you guys probably heard about is, you know, I've got, friends posting about raising money and we've raised a ton of money because of it. And we're able to kind of help to some degree, these families who just lost their kid or their kids going through a very traumatic time. So, you know, being able to reach everybody and everyone's able to donate a dollar or $5, whatever, you know, that's something that social media has to offer us, which is great. How are you guys raising money? Like what's the the program or the foundation that you're using? Give give it a shout out. We'll, We'll repost it. Yeah, so I'll and uh, I'll post it after this too. So one of my friends, Chris, she's actually raising money to create these kind of comfort baskets, uh, and we're going to put them together tomorrow uh, to go out to what was just the third grade. Uh, uh, I think it was third grade, but the 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 students that were you know most affected within that classroom, but also now because we've raised I think twenty twenty five thousand at this point, Chris has done an incredible wow. job at that. 
um, we can probably help, you know, more of the school than we anticipated. So we'll, I'll post it. Um, we're just taking through Venmo right now. Um, there's some GoFundMe pages. One has raised over $350,000. So I, you know, as long as you're seeing other people donate into it, usually it's pretty legit. And there are some good people here that do want to rally around the community to help these, uh, these victims right now. That's awesome. That's great for you guys for doing that. And that's, that's a huge uh, amount of money too to raise in such a little time, little amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. No, Chris, she's done an awesome job putting that out there. She's got a kid too. So it really hit home for her. And, um, and yeah, I'll, I'll send you guys the info on that too. I appreciate you guys wanting to post a uh, post something about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, anything we can do uh, to help for sure. Um, I appreciate also want to just ask you a little bit more about the real estate. Like, most of your stuff you do in Nashville or you kind of do a little bit in California or like, how does that, is it, are you like kind of restricted with your license? How does that work? Yeah. So for residential real estate, which is the primary space that I'm in, you're kind of restricted in terms of, you know, the state that you're working in. So I focus primarily on the greater Nashville area. So as south as spring hill which is you know about an hour away 45 minutes away um just a big circle around downtown nashville but what is great about real estate is the referral network and i know a lot of people in different states other agents so if i'm saying on top of all my different you know agents and friends in different and different markets we're able to just pass each other business and get referral fees out of it too so while it's more focused on my expertise in nashville I still have relationships throughout the whole country uh, to kind of guide people into the right direction with people that I trust. And there's still ways to make money that way as well, too. Have you been approached uh, by any like reality TV shows to do like your real estate stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have. Uh, I was in talks with somebody at the beginning of this year. Uh, it's kind of fallen off since, but uh, I do need to fall back up with that. But there's a couple TV shows that are, you know, looking to be filmed here in Nashville. Uh, I definitely have chatted with some people about it. Again, I don't know if I'm the best at real estate, but if people think I do okay with it or uh, for reality TV, if people think I would do okay with being on reality TV, then sure, I'll do it again. It helps. Again, it helps the brand grow. It's good marketing and good following. So, I mean, why not? Sell, uh, yeah, yeah. Selling Nashville. Spin off of Selling it's, Sunset. And sell, yeah, selling, we need selling that. Broadway or something. Nashville's bumping. It's a, yeah, I think you know that pretty well. Both of you guys know that pretty well. You guys saw it last summer and then also Kyle while you were here. Just like, it is a crazy city that people don't even realize between the downtown lifestyle to like the farmland that's just 20 minutes away from you. It's, it's a happening place for sure. Definitely. And uh, one, one more thing I just want to touch on real quick. We're running out of, out of recording time here, but um, yeah. you've talked a lot about um, mental health in terms of, you know, throughout hockey and throughout uh, TV and real estate. Um, you, I saw an interview that you did. You mentioned that sometimes people in the spotlight get forced into uh, addressing their mental health before, you know, they've really addressed it with themselves. So what advice would you yeah. give to, you know, other other athletes or other people that are in entertainment that are, you know, just or even have, you know, bigger platforms um, that what what advice would you give to those people that that have those platforms to in terms of how to deal with their mental health um, on on that platform in front of people or how to kind of deal with it with themselves privately before they they put it out in front of the world? Yeah, I, I think that um, me talking about my story with my mental health was so worth it even at times where I, I felt like oh this is a bad idea because it's going to make me look a certain way the impact that it had on people and i'm saying this because i was able to um you know get feedback from people saying your story helped me i was thinking about killing myself the other day and i saw this video and it made me rethink it like i had true honest stories that i screenshotted of people it, it impacting them in a, in a very helpful way. So, you know, I'm so grateful that I did that. And I had that push to do that, to be honest, because the press was going to release something anyway. So I beat them to the punch with it. But honestly, I, uh, I think that if you have a platform, it is so powerful. And the message that you give off to people uh, can really save people's lives. So don't hold back on it. Um, if it's, if it's something that you're struggling with, people can relate to it more than you think. Awesome what's the future for you now? Like obviously focusing on real estate, is there any other things that you're looking forward to doing here in the, in the next few months or years? Yeah. I mean, I'm always, I'm very business minded. So it, uh, real estate, I want to grow my business to 
as big as I can. I want to grow a team. I've got one agent right now, but you know, last year on my own, I did write over $30 million. So I want to improve my numbers. It's going to be a little tougher this year, but I do want to build a team. I want to have a good, strong, you know, little, little small team uh, for real estate, but also past that, I, I do like other businesses. I'm actually working with some guys right now on a uh, single use sunscreen uh, stick, which is pretty interesting with some cool marketing play on it. Um, where you can brand to all these different hotels and, you know, CMA Fest, different events. So we're actually launching that here shortly, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, just a lot of different ideas that pop up that I kind of like to go after. I'm young to this, for the most part, so I want to be aggressive at this time in my life and try some different things. Uh, but nothing on the horizon specifically that's like huge, big picture for me. But you have like Airbnbs and stuff for the, like the national yeah. market and what else yep. and stuff like that so like i feel like right now summertime bachelor and bachelorette parties like things yeah. are really gonna get going here right now right yeah i mean i'm big on short-term rentals here i'd say about 60 percent of my business over the last two years has been short-term rentals working with investors i personally have invested in a few myself um one of my favorite ones is my johnny cashville house <clears throat> it's really cool it's like johnny cash but johnny you know nashville cashville but it's really cool. I mean, these things, you'd be surprised. My unit's closer to like 170K gross a year for something like that. It's it's insane how much people will spend on Airbnbs. But the scene is bachelor and bachelorette parties, right? So if they can all get into one house and even if they spend four grand for three days uh, for a weekend, you know, you split that between 10 people, that's 400 bucks a person for the whole weekend. Like it's not that crazy expensive. So the concept makes sense here. Um, you know, like I said, I work with a lot of investors. I own a couple investment properties myself, and um, I know that you might, you guys might want to buy here someday too. So we'll work together. Me, me and Zengerly are looking. Maybe we'll get Kyle to come in on it with us. <laughs> I've got one right now, back pocket. I can give it to you guys right now. I got a good one. Sounds we'll good. Sign us there. up. <laughs> um, do you, do you have lots of other hockey players like reaching out to you about uh, like real estate and stuff in Nashville? Yeah, uh, honestly, it wouldn't even just be specific hockey players. I, I was really connected with my previous agency, uh, CAA Sports. Uh, they do football, baseball, they do everything. So uh, there's an office here in Nashville, and I'm good buddies with a lot of them. So I'm working with baseball players, football players, hockey players, um, and different you know sports guys. And so it's 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 really interesting because I kind of understand where they're coming from and traveling and needing to place money in different places and moving from state to state. So um, there's a lot of comfort there for those guys, knowing that I have a background in hockey and being a professional athlete. So that's why we all kind of connect, but yeah, some people definitely do reach out randomly and, you know, try to find them a place. You got to get Forsberg, the the new uh, property after that big contract you just signed. Yeah, I know. I ran, <laughs> I ran into, I ran in, I run into him all the time actually at the mall, especially Green Hills Mall. He's a big shopper. The the Swedes love to shop, right? They love their style. So Green Hills got all the designer stores in it too. Yeah, you've got the Gucci <laughs> now, Louis Vuitton, uh, all those good stuff. Yeah, that's. I spent a lot of time at that mall. <laughs> I I heard. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, I, if you want to pl plug your social medias real quick so people can uh, stay up to tune on, you know, your your real estate, um, where to donate for for the uh, the the school shooting that just happened to the families. Um, yeah, and, uh, to keep a, to keep up to date when you release this reality show. So, <laughs> oh, God, tell the, people, tell the people where to find you and uh, what network you're going to be on coming up here. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm a heavy hitter on Instagram. I'm Instagramming every day now. Yeah, so my Instagram, I've got two of them, at Nick Cordelis. Nick has no K, so N-I-C, then Cordelis, K-E-R-D-I-L-E-S. And then my real estate page, just real estate, is Nick Sells Nash, N-I-C-S-E-L-L-S, and then N-A-S-H, Nash, Nick Sells Nash. So follow me on those two, and then you'll see some stuff about fundraisers, and you know, you'll see some cool reels, because I do a lot of reels these days, and uh, I think you'll enjoy following me. I hope you will. Follow it. Awesome, man. Thanks again for coming on the show. We really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can do this again sometime. Hopefully we can, uh, Thanks. We can get together Thanks, we'll brother. Go to Nashville again, too. Yeah, you guys are all coming this summer. We'll figure it out. I probably won't have room in my Airbnbs, but we'll go get an Airbnb and we'll have a blast. Let's do it. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Thank you, guys.